Welcome back to another wonderful day here, everyone. And I am very excited to see hopefully as many of you as possible as we go forward and, you know, have those Google Meet sessions today. If you're not able to meet uh, with us during one of those, I do want you to know that uh, tomorrow we will be taking a quiz over Desiree's baby and common usage sets one through 10. That's right, we are going to do sets one through 10. They should be things that we're used to, that we're familiar with, and they should be repeats of words that you've done in the past. Um, we will be going over those, and we um, will also be t quizzing over Desiree's Baby, which we should be finishing at this point. You should also notice that if you had troubles uh, reading Desiree's Baby online uh, yesterday, that should be fixed now, and if it's not, you need to let me know ASAP so I can get you caught up to everybody else at this point, okay? Um, now let's talk about Desiree's baby a little bit. So we have our main character, of course, Desiree. She has this big conflict with Armand um, because, well, their baby's not white. Um, and this is the American South. And Armand and De Desiree both appear to be white. And this is going to be, obviously, this is a huge conflict. This is still a conflict that often really people joke about in pop culture today. We like to make uh, jokes about, you know, like, have we seen, like, the crayon jokes, right? Uh, like, the memes and stuff. And we, we all know what I'm talking about. We joke about this in a wildly inappropriate and untasteful fashion all the time. Um, and we have a bigger issue here in Desiree's baby because it's le much less so that maybe Desiree um, was impure in the fact that she slept with somebody else that wasn't her husband, but the fact that she's not white. Well, and then we come to realize, obviously, that, well, it's not Desiree's fault. She has this very ambiguous, amorphous background, but it's not her fault. In fact, she, being a woman, and especially a woman in a book during this time period, is pure. Um, and we have this kind of cool interaction with Mother Nature in the landscape itself, where she goes and disappears into the bayou with her baby. And, you know, that's, that's this kind of beautiful moment of, you know, Mother Earth being a pure spirit, um, taking back both, um, both wife and child, um, both daughter and granddaughter of sorts. Um, but we have this bigger issue of, you know, Armand, he he himself thinks that he is completely infallible, um, which brings up the contention of, you know, gender relation and who is at fault, even if the man is the one at fault. And really, nobody's at fault. That's the great tragedy of the story is Armand's just a terrible person, right? He, he's just a bad guy. And he is a bad guy because he doesn't understand who he is and where he's from. But despite not wanting to know any of those things or without those things, he's just a bad person. And he really stands up on, on the fact that it's impossible for him to be impure. And that is kind of, he takes that, that violent kind of outburst out on Desiree and the baby. And he, he, pushes that onto them as if it's their fault when we know as readers by the end of the story it's it's not um we found out that his heritage is a lot more nuanced and a lot more tragic now culturally this is even more devastating because he's a plantation owner in the south and yes there were plantation owners that um were of various races in the american south but not like this, right? This is this is Louisiana. This is like deep south. Um, this is a trading city. This is where people would go to trade the cotton and the slaves themselves. And Armand was a terrible human being. He mistreated everybody. And so for him to be realizing that he is mistreating people just on the way that they look, when he himself, while he doesn't look black, while he, you know, he doesn't perceive that part of himself because he doesn't know, he still is abusing people, right? And, and he's still part of that group that he is abusing. So these are just little minute pieces that um, are much more nuanced and explored more thoroughly in the text that I want you to pay attention to. So take these ideas, go through this text. If you haven't already read it once, maybe go back through and read it again. It's pretty short. Um, also, Common Lit will read it aloud to you, and there are plenty of audiobooks online. 
So I want you to focus on these things and get ready for the quiz and the quizzes uh, tomorrow. I hope to see as many of your amazing faces today during the Google Meet sessions, and I will see all of you very, very soon. The guiding question and learning targets for today are how do we think about American issues in various contexts with a learning target of how are people represented in literature as society evolves.